Ciao a tutti, benvenuti. Hi everybody. Welcome to the video tutorial for the setup and assembly of the new RCF line array system, the HDL50A. The video tutorial is divided into sections, with the first showing the software settings that will generate as output the inclinations of the clusters and the angles that have to be set between the different modules. The second section shows the video of the actual assembly. In the third section, we use the remote control software RDNet to construct a synoptic diagram for the system. Relativo al sistema. In this case consisting of 12 HDL50A modules, with the software RDNet making it possible to control and balance the system. And in particular, we have the option of applying equalization to compensate the absorption of high frequencies caused by temperature and humidity. The final section of the tutorial shows how the system is dismantled. First, we input the data to the software. We start up the HDL Shape Designer program and we see what fields need to be set. Field X, minimum audience, is the distance from the cluster where we want to begin correct system cover, in our case 7 meters. We do the same for the maximum audience field, in our case 85 meters, which defines the point furthest from the cluster that we want to cover and towards which the highest modules in the cluster will be pointed. Beyond 85 meters, the frequency response of the system is not guaranteed. Next, we set the cabinet number, in our case 12, and the height we foresee raising the flybar. An appropriate instrument is used to read the temperature and humidity. And then we press the auto splay button. As can be seen in the splay column, the angles are indicated that need to be set for each cabinet in the cluster. Above the splay field is the flybar field, which indicates the angle of inclination that this ladder needs to have to achieve the conditions of cover required by the project. Obviously, the indication of inclination of the flybar is useful if the lifting operations are conducted using two motors. If we were working with a single suspension point, following the instructions in the relevant hanging points field, the cluster would automatically assume the correct inclination. In our case, with a single suspension point, we have to set the attachments in holes 17 and 18 to position B. The difference between positions A and B of the hook accessory determines an intermediate inclination, normally 0.5 degrees, between the two reference holes in the flybar. For more details on the use of the software, in all cases refer to the HDL50A manual, which can be freely downloaded from our website. A new dedicated version will soon be released of the Ease Focus 3 program, customized for all RCF speakers. In addition to the setup of angles and inclinations, it will also provide acoustic simulations, providing a complete package for the simulation and setup of all types of RCF speakers and line arrays. I would like to note one point. While a program is of great help for setting up line arrays, it is also true that the program does not think. For example, if we set a system of 8 modules with the fly bar at the height of 8 meters and we want to start cover at 3 meters, the software will give us an angle setup for an extremely curved configuration, of very little sense from an acoustic perspective. In this case, it is better to keep the cluster straighter, start cover at 6 to 7 meters, and then add front fill to cover the area closer to the cluster. We locate the fly bar in a convenient position for the attachment of the motors or motor. The hanging accessory is hooked to the fly bar, ensuring that the pins are correctly inserted in both holes and that the accessory is solidly attached. If we were using a single suspension point, we have the two options A and B. This delta represents an intermediate point between the achievable inclinations between the two different holes, thus doubling the number of positions of the hanging accessory. 
we release the two brackets for front hooking from the idle position and fix them by inserting the pins in the relevant holes. Obviously, we check that the brackets and pins are correctly fixed and solidly in position. Now the fly bar can be hooked to the motors. In this case, we are using two for suspension. Please note, with a single suspension point, it is possible to raise up to 20 HDL50A modules. However, we strongly advise against this, because setting up such a large system with a single suspension point is very difficult and very dangerous, especially when hanging the last modules. Noi consigliamo sempre. We recommend always using two motors for a system including more than eight modules. Inoltre, utilizzando due punti. Furthermore, with two suspension points, there is the option of correcting the inclination of the cluster even when it is raised, to optimize the cover. After raising the fly bar to a height that enables the first four HDL 50A to be hung, we position the modules below the fly bar and then lower it and manually guide the front brackets so that they engage in the hooking points. We insert the fixing pins of the front brackets and check that they are solidly in position. Now we move to the rear section to fix the central bracket to the fly bar. This bracket cannot have different inclinations, unlike all the subsequent modules. The fly bar is lowered until it nearly rests on the first module and the suspension point pin is inserted. The motors are used to put the fly bar under traction and the locking point inserted. This pin serves to prevent the fly bar coming to rest on the first module if the setup is particularly curved or inclined upwards. After hooking the first module to the fly bar, the angles of the other modules need to be set as indicated by the program. The HDL50 assembly system permits the angles to be set when the entire trolley of modules is still on the ground. The correct angles are selected. Now we can raise the first trolley, lifting it slightly off the ground. The trolley is slid out, releasing first the rear part, keeping the frame slightly raised with one hand, and removing the pin with the other hand. Then we release the two front pins to completely free the trolley. Now with the cluster under traction, it is necessary to insert the pins to avoid compression in the case that the configuration is particularly curved or inclined, as can be seen in the examples shown. In case 1, as shown in the figure, in the absence of the compression pins, the first modules tend to crowd together, squashing the cluster and causing it to lose the shape defined during design. Case 2 is an example of a cluster inclined steeply downwards when the forces at the front of the modules become unbalanced and they tend to bear against each other. The pins to prevent the compression of the system at the back are inserted into the relevant hole for the degree of tilt of the module. For example, if the module has a degree of inclination of 0.7 degrees, the compression pin is inserted into the respective hole C0.7 and so on for all the pins. The pins to prevent compression at the front have a fixed position, regardless of the inclination of the modules. Now we can raise the first four modules to permit the attachment of the next modules. The second cluster is positioned below the first, so that the front brackets are aligned with their hooking positions. The cluster is lowered and guided manually so that the brackets enter their respective positions and the pins inserted. To enable easy hooking at the front, it is necessary to raise the system with the second four modules hooked only at the front. Once the system is raised above the ground, we push the second trolley forward while at the same time lowering the cluster until the fourth module of the first trolley is completely supported on the first module of the second. We now insert the pins in the positions indicated by the program and we slightly raise the cluster so that it is off the ground. A questo punto possiamo liberare the second trolley can now be freed, and as for the first four modules, all the pins to prevent compression are inserted, both on the front and back. 
we proceed in the same way for all the subsequent modules. Finally, the cluster can be raised at the height defined by the project. Ora possiamo andare a lanciare il software. Now we start up the RDNet program to check the correct inclination of the cluster and to verify that all modules are working properly. Premendo il tasto Quick Start, by pressing the Quick Start button, the system analyzes the network, indicating in the program's work area the modules actually identified, displayed in their cabling order. Double clicking on the first module in the cluster displays the inclination of the flybar. Using the motors, the cluster inclination can be modified until the value indicated in the program design is reached. Procediamo con la correzione delle Next, the system is corrected and equalized on the basis of the number of modules deployed and the current temperature and humidity conditions. We open the Shape Designer project developed earlier, enter the temperature and humidity values, and then issue another autosplay command. The angles and inclination of the cluster will not change, but now we have the possibility, using the Export to RDNet menu, to save a file to the computer, which can subsequently be imported to RDNet. After returning to the RDNet workspace and selecting all the HDL50 modules, we go to the Properties window. Here, the Load Preset button is used to load the file saved previously from Shape Designer. Now the modules have the correct cluster size and are equalized on the basis of the current ambient conditions. It is important to note that every module will have a different preset, because in a line array system, every module is dedicated to covering a specific area at a specific distance. HDL50 represents a true innovation in this respect for system management. And above all, as regards the correction of high frequencies, achieving a truly linear frequency response within the area covered. This can be considered a starting point for the system audio manager or the sound technician running the show, from which the parameters can be optimized according to specific requirements. Procediamo ora allo smontaggio del sistema. Next, the system is dismantled. Abbassiamo il cluster. The cluster is lowered until the two front brackets enter the relevant points in the first trolley. The cluster is guided into position and the pins inserted to fix the front section. The rear section is then moved and, after slightly raising the cluster, the support bracket is fixed in the hole for 1.4 degrees. Leaving the cluster under traction, all the compression pins are removed, both front and back. Now we can lower the system until the fifth module, counting from the bottom, is completely supported on the fourth. The pin is removed and the back bracket is released. The two front pins are also removed. It is necessary to slightly raise the cluster to do this. And then the system is raised to enable removal of the first trolley of modules. The same procedure is repeated for the remaining two trolleys of modules. Appoggiamo quindi il flybar. Then we lay down the flybar and return the front brackets to the idle position, removing the fixing pins. The chains are removed from the suspension points and the motors disengaged. Thank you for your attention. For more detailed information, please refer to the manuals, which can be freely downloaded from our website. Goodbye, everyone.